Welcome back. We are here at Classic Talk with Bing and Dennis, speaking with J. Hunter Morris. Well, tell us, is the Siegfried and the Matt, is it your first one? Um, no. Uh, let's back up just a little bit. So I covered it in Seattle. I covered it in uh, Los Angeles. And then I went to San Francisco as the cover as well. And uh, opportunity presented itself, and I... I got to sing my first Siegfried in San Francisco uh, with, in Francesca Zambello's new production. How did that happen? She she gave me a shot um, mm -hmm. and and believed in me. And I've known Francesca for a lot of years, all the way back, in fact, to my first uh, summer as an apprentice in Santa Fe. And uh, sort of at the last minute, I, I got I got the opportunity to step in, and so I got to rehearse. Uh, Siegfried, the young Siegfried, and got to perform that. So that that really, in answer to your previous question, is the reason why when Peter Gelb came to me on that Friday afternoon and said, can you really do this? I, I could look him in the face and say, yeah, I can, because I, I had that amazing experience in San Francisco, and I felt I felt ready. I felt prepared. After he left the room, you didn't think, "Oh my God, can I really do it?" <laughs> oh, you better believe I collapse in a <laughs> blubbering heap. Absolutely, <laughs> and you know, I wrote my wrote my mom and said, "Start the prayer chain, Mama. <laughs> I'm singing Siegfried at the Met." Um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's crazy. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the. Uh, what was it called? The Wagner's Dream. Wagner's yes, yes, Dream. Yes. You know, they also said on that Friday afternoon, oh, by the way, you're going to sing Siegfried. You're, you're only going to get two rehearsals. And if you don't mind, we're going to have a camera crew follow you around. <laughs> so from that very first morning when I, I walked into the theater there, all of a sudden, uh, you know, my life changed for the better. You are on the spot. Yeah. I have one more Siegfried question before we leave Siegfried a bit. Okay. The normal progression, I believe, is, for tenors is to do Siegmund and then graduate to Siegfried. Did you jump over Siegmund or did you do? Did you ever do Siegmund? Oh, I would love to do Siegmund. Have you, you haven't heard? Done it. Oh, I have not done. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that music? Oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> beautiful. I'd love to sing it. I sort of have, Dennis. I, uh, I in Los Angeles. I covered Siegfried, and I also covered Siegmund. Uh -huh. And so I learned it, and I actually got to do a lot of the rehearsals. Placido Domingo was the Siegmund, and I got to do a lot of the rehearsals, including a, a final dress, and then Placido came in and did the performances. But, oh my goodness, I love singing that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's lower. It's, it's very different. It's lower. It's lower, and it's not as long. You get killed at the end of the second act. It's not as terrifying. I mean, that's the bottom line, you know. Is it, I, I, I would uh, step into that with great joy and enthusiasm, uh, and leave the terror behind, you know. When should that opportunity ever present itself? So during the, uh, your live, you know, proceeding, and uh, you probably have done a few other things besides opera. So I understand you were on Broadway. I sure was. I sure was. And I think, I don't know the exact year. I'm terrible with years. Uh, I'm going to say somewhere in the mid-90s, maybe 93 or 94, I had an audition for a play. And my manager back then said, you know, I, you need to sing the aria from Tosca. So I went down and I auditioned for this new play by Terrence McNally called Masterclass. And... Uh, I got it. And that was, you know, I've talk, told you about the, the bucket full of good fortune. That was such a huge opportunity for me. Uh, not because it was uh, on Broadway, because we didn't start on Broadway. We started in a 200-seat theater in Philadelphia. Um, but it was with Zoe Caldwell. And I shared the stage every day for, I think it was almost a year and a half, not every day, but uh, a lot of days, I got to share the stage with Zoe Caldwell and find out what what it means to be a pro. I mean, she's a pro. Mm -hmm. and, and what it means to have power and might on the stage. I got to taste that up close and personal every day. And the most important thing about Masterclass was I got to sing every day. I had to sing... Uh, the Recondita Armonia from the first act of Tosca, and I had to sing a high B flat, and I, had, I bragged about it before I said, it had to be good. I was supposed to move Maria Collis, so you know, you, you cack the B flat at the end, and 
it's not quite the same. So that was an amazing training ground for me. We went to Philadelphia. We went to Los Angeles. We played Washington, D.C., the Kennedy Center, before we came to New York and, and, and did it on Broadway. I did it, I think, for a year here in New York and got to practice every day and sing in front of people. And that, that was, a, was a huge break for me. Would you like to do Broadway again? You better believe it. What Who would you wouldn't? like to do? I'd love to do a play. You know, I... I love the acting part of this business. It's not just it's not just singing, you know. We get to we get to step into somebody else's clothes and character and mindset for a little while and bring their baggage along with us and, and taste what it feels like to be somebody else. I love doing that. Um and I, I've got a feeling it's gonna come. I don't know. Um but you know, as long as the hand of fate continues to to give me these kind little pats, you know, whatever doors open. I will go joyfully through. I think. I think you know. With you, you probably you're the type of person you know, full of the energy and the dimensional and a lot of things going on with yourself. I think that's a one of a very good quality for. A Thank actor. you. Thank you, Bing. You know what? This year has been incredible for me, and I'll tell you why. Um, I got to play this 17-year-old superhero fearless, uh, as you know very well. And I also got to play Captain Ahab, uh, who is this surly old, you know, sea dog. And uh, in a, a new production of a new opera set to Moby Dick, um, and I got to do it in Adelaide and, and in San Diego and, and also just a few months ago in in uh, San Francisco. And if, if I may share with your viewers. They, they recorded it, and it's going to be available soon on um, DVD and CD, and also I think it's going to play on PBS Great Performances mm. very soon. So all, you know, all of a sudden I'm stepping into this peg leg, you know, and I grew me a big old long gray beard, and uh, I got to play the polar opposite of Siegfried for several months last year. And it's it was one of the my favorite roles, one of the favorite chapters of my life, one of my favorite operas I've ever been in. Mm. Um, What's it like to sing? Amazing. It's incredible music. It's written by Jake Heggie, and as as uh, we talk a little bit about the, the good things that happen in our life, the director was Leonard Folia, who directed Masterclass. I haven't seen him since back then in the 90s when we, we did that show, and all of a sudden here he is doing this new production uh, of Moby Dick. So, you know what? I loved singing it. It's not easy walking around in a peg leg all night long, I'll tell you <laughs> that. It hurt my back, it hurt my hips and <laughs> shoulders and everything. It was It's a challenge. And the music, you know, Jake is an amazing writer for the voice. Everybody that sung his music will trumpet that from the rooftops. He's a great composer. And we all, everybody who's been a part of this show, believes that it's it's something really special and something really remarkable. So I'm looking forward for uh, for you and for your viewers and everybody to get a chance to taste it. It's so good. And, and as an actor, uh, to get to taste Siegfried and Captain Ahab all in one year, you know, it's it was it was a real stretch and, and a great pleasure. Great. You have written a book. <gasps> My goodness. Entitled Diary of a Redneck Opera Singer. That's right. And I sure have. what led you to write the book? You know what? It, it wasn't a book. I mean, listen, I'm not a writer. I've never taken a... If you've read the book, then you know I that's true. You, then you but, know yeah, that's no, true. I would never know that. Uh, yeah. You know what? I've never taken a class or anything like that. But I started off writing emails back, uh, you know, back in the late 90s to my family. Just telling them what it's like to be me out there on the road and the things that happen. I, I'm I am the beneficiary of great fortune, and I am uh, I've been the punching bag for the hand of fate many times. So you know, and that's what's really fun is is when the bad stuff happens to you and the funny stuff. So it's just been it's a collection of over the years of of you know stories and me telling my folks back home you know what what I go through and what it's like and and the last chapter and when when I felt like it was really time to put a. a a bookend on the end of the book was getting this great break last year and, and here at the Met. And I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm able to, 
to close that for a little while. You closed it in a very touching manner, manner believe me. Thank you, Dennis. Let Thank me, you very much. I'd love to read one quote from the book, which will lead us into a little talk about life on the road as an opera singer. Okay. You wrote, folks like you and me who just spend too much time alone, maybe in the practice room in front of the mirror, watching their every twitch, admiring every nuance of their lovely voice, too much time alone in hotel rooms, eating out, reading, studying, exercising, always alone. No wonder so many of us think the world revolves around us. Our little world does. There's a lot there. Yeah. A little world in that hotel room all by yourself. You know what? Uh, I, I'm going to stand behind that. I think that's the truth. Um, th and there are a lot of people that are very good at it, uh, at this, at um, making the most of this lifestyle. It sort of depends on how nervous you are as a human being. You know, while I'm here in Siegfried be being asked me a, a little bit ago if I'm able to go out and walk through Central Park and um, be a normal human being. I'm not really good at that while I'm singing Siegfried. I'm, uh, I, I spend uh, most of my time uh, in study and in practicing and preparation. We rehearse a lot uh, and also in sort of uh, in protective mode because there's so much at stake. That probably is why um, I believe that that is true for so many of us. There's a lot at stake. You know, first of all, if we don't sing, we don't get paid. Uh, and second of all, the people that employ us, they've got a lot riding on us being healthy, us being smart, us um, being responsible as, uh, as actors and as singers and protecting the production that they've invested so much uh, in us. So um, I, I've got a lot of friends that are good at it. They live it up and they go out and eat and they've socialized with folks and carry on. Um, I, I'm not real good at that yet, but maybe someday I will be. I'm not done yet. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I will be someday. Uh, is there a second book one day on the way? You better believe it. Uh, uh, it's already it's, it's already, already started and it's already begun. A little uh, push for the first book. How is it available? So we know. Um, E easiest way is there's a link on my website, jhuntermorris.com. Um, I got to tell you, I I'm so tickled about this because, uh, not because I ever thought anybody would buy it, but I wanted my son to have a copy. I wanted my son to know who I am someday, and so I, I tried to get it published um, for a few years. I, I felt like it was sort of put together and um Nobody was interested. It was, it, you know, it's mostly potty humor. I tell you that straight up. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, hopefully some some good vibes and some inspiration, but it's it's largely potty humor, isn't it's it? It's humorous. Yes. Oh, okay, right on. Um, nobody was interested in it, and and uh, again, the hand of fate. I got a phone call in. I think it was late February, uh, Luis Godsola from Opera Lively Press called me and said, you know what, I've read your book, I laughed my head off, and I'd love to publish it. So I, that, I couldn't be happier, um, not, you know, at the thought of uh, anybody uh, having their life changed, but maybe we're going to get, uh, spread a little love and give some giggles to folks that need it. And most importantly, someday my son Cooper is going to, he's going to know a little bit more about me and who I am. I think that book is very easy to read, but, and yet it's so true. I mean, everything is natural and truth in there. I think that will make people really feel it's a wonderful book to read. Thank so you, Bing. Yeah. You know what? Uh, Let's go back to the beginning of this conversation. My, my father and my mother um, gave me the most valuable thing that I think a parent can give, and that is a belief that I'm okay, and I don't have to try and pretend to be somebody else. Listen, it, took, it takes courage to write something and put it out there and say, this is available, you can go and buy it, and this is me, and this is who I am. I feel very vulnerable about it, um, and I'm, I'm shy at the thought of people critiquing it and, and criticizing me for it. But you know what? At the end of the day, I, I'm going to be the man that my daddy wanted me to be. And I'm going to believe that this is who I am. These are the things that happened to me and the things that I've gone through. And it's okay. I do don't you, have to try and be somebody else. Do you really think people would think you're shy? Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm, I, I am very shy about... 
about that book. Mm -hmm. I, 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 very insecure, uh, just because it's because. I, you know, Luis did me a great uh, favor and left my language in there. And uh, as you know, if you've read it, it's it's the way I talk, and it's um, the punctuation and the grammar and all that is <laughs> is a mess. But it's it's my voice telling uh, the stories of of what it's been like. For Speaking about your father, and uh, he passed away when he was forty one years old, and you were very young. How was it that played in part in your life? Uh, it was obviously very difficult at the time. You know, I'm I'm really lucky. I've got, I have a very strong uh, mother, mm. uh, and a very strong support system in the family. My sister, we're all very close. Um, but as over the years, as as I have met a lot of people out there in the world, I I know that I had it so good. I had a I had an amazing father, mm. and I would not trade those 12 years that I had with him right. for a lifetime with anyone else. Um, because he he not only taught me a lot, he not only used his words a lot, but he set a great example. Um, in, in his world, he was a great human being, and he made a difference for good in people's life. And, and that, in, in, at the core of me, in my heart, that's who I aspire to be someday, and that's who I aspire for my son to be. I want him to be a great person that, that makes uh, everybody around him a little happier and a little better. Do you think that during that time you say, okay, I am the one, have to take that position, you know, maybe take your father's position to really try to take care of everything, do you think? Yeah, n no, I think... Um, I think I, I don't have uh, enough. I don't have enough strength to say that out loud. You know, it really comes down to a daily thing. It just comes down to when I put my feet on the floor today. I'm going to be, especially now that I have a four-year-old son who's looking to me for an example, not for my words. He wants to see who I am as a person, and so every day when I, I put my feet on the ground, I, I, I say I'm going to do my best today. I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm not going to stand in the pulpit and try and change anybody's life. I'm not going to uh, um, probably do anything remarkable, but I'm going to set a good example for my boy. That's 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 a big challenge. You know, somebody asked me the other day. You know, this must be so hard singing Siegfried. Singing for a living is not hard. Raising a child, <laughs> that's hard. Sitting at a desk, doing a job you don't enjoy, that's hard. So you know, look, I'm gonna count my blessings. Every step I take, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best, and uh, hopefully, my boy will. Maybe he'll be the one that makes a really big difference in the world. Wouldn't Twenty years later, if he said, "Dad, I want to be a singer," what would you say to him? Go for it. Get in the practice room. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, that's what it all comes down to. You know, that's that's what I learned in Nashville when I went in as a mediocre guitar player. Everybody else, all those great players and great singers, they practice all the time. They have a real drive, a real passion for it. And so, you know, that's my message to Cooper is, if you want to be great at something, you got to love it and you got to practice. How does Cooper react at home when he hears his dad singing, practicing? <laughs> he, he, there are times that he loves it. Uh, he's got a sword, he, he's got a shield, and he runs around and, and he knows what it means. He, he, you know, for a long time there, he'd run around saying, Daddy, sing with the dragon, Daddy, ding dragon. So he has seen, he's gone to a performance already. He's, he's, he's been around wow. for him. He sure has. He's seen me fight the dragon. Um, he, he loves it. I think he's, uh, he's got a real passion for the dance. Uh -huh. My wife, my wife, Meg, uh, danced and sang on Broadway here for many years. Oh, I see. Uh, she was most remarkable in, in Fosse, I think, if, if you saw that. And uh, he loves to dance, my boy. Uh, unfortunately, he looks like he's probably got my coordination. <laughs> so he, hopefully maybe he will evolve out of that and, and, and catch some of her genes. How old is he? He just turned four. Uh -huh. My, my first and only child. And you have one sister. Is she musical at all? She's very musical. Uh, she's also uh, she's also a, a grand-hearted nurse. She takes mm -hmm. care of people. Mm -hmm. And she and my mom still live in Paris, Texas. And my sister runs a home health nursing agency. And uh, she sings at church. And 
she has a beautiful voice and she lets me take on the lion's share of that <laughs> think about that moby dick yeah no can you tell us about what do you want to know the music is amazing all the parts are amazing here's the thing about jake you know uh, the part that he wrote for stephen costello this beautiful lyric tenor uh, the part for he wrote uh, every part for a specific singer or not? I don't know that he wrote it for a specific singer but for a specific mm -hmm. type of voice mm -hmm. uh, Morgan Smith plays Starbuck the, the first mate amazingly beautiful lyric baritone arias um, it, for for Captain Ahab there's some very powerful big boy singing uh, I, I get to swing up in a cage about 30 feet above the stage and fighting the fury of the of the storm and you know seeking that white whale uh, but he, he wrote he wrote great music for all of us to sing and obviously the story is amazing is it a book that when you were asked to sing the opera it was like oh my god I love that book I, I can't wait to sing it or did you immediately go out and buy the book and read it for the first time uh, no it's crazy uh, at Baylor I one of my English lit classes I wrote a paper on Captain oh, Ahab is that right yeah and of course I'd forgotten it all but I found it uh, it, one time when I was home in Paris, when I knew I was going to get to do Captain Ahab, and, and I poured over it again. I was so young back then. Uh, I didn't understand it fully, but I, I reread it and revisited it again, did my homework. And, you know, this is one of the great characters in all of literature to get to embody and, and to step into. And I, I hope I get to do him a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an opera that I think probably 100 years from now, people are going to be sitting out there watching this opera. Speaking of roles, what roles are out there in the future that you have not sung yet that you are saying, I want to sing this? I want to sing Peter Grimes. Peter uh -huh. Grimes. I've never gotten a chance. Uh -huh. um, I hope that's going to come. I'd l I want to sing Otello. Uh, you know, the thing about all this, uh, getting to do The Ring, is I, I think I found a certain repertoire that's, uh, that suits me. I sang my first Tristan this year uh, in concert with Zubin Mehta. That went very well. Uh, but I want to sing the acting roles. And I, I think that if I sing well, if I sing beautifully, I can do uh, the Italian repertoire. I can sing uh, Otello and, and even Cavaradossi. Um, I can sing Samson. I, I've done Samson before and I really I, I enjoy that. Um, I enjoy the new operas. I have to say that getting to create a, a role uh, is a unique thrill. And, uh, Do you have any of those coming up in the future? Any new? Not one. You know, well, there aren't that many being written. To <laughs> I know, uh, but you know what? Ahab's at the top of the list. That's a that's an opera that I think uh, when people see it and hear it, it's gonna it's gonna have legs. Sorry, all over the world, and it's gonna get done a lot. And I hope I get a chance to do that. And Grimes, yeah. Do you think uh, people say? You're overnight sensational. Uh, I've heard that a lot. Of course, it's of course complete you nonsense. You, yeah, you I mean, I've been trying to do this for 23 years, um, and I've been working really hard at it for a long time. But look, there's no denying that that all of a sudden, you know, that that uh, this ring cycle is played in movie theaters all over the world. So all of a sudden, I'm I'm having the great privilege of sitting in front of new audiences and meeting new people and hearing from a, a lot of these people that uh, have really enjoyed this ring cycle. And it's, you know, this has made a difference. This has made an impact on a lot of people's life. I, I get emails from them almost every day that have have found a renewed sense or maybe a brand new sense of of love and passion for our art form. Any period of your life, you think you would do it differently? Not one, not one. Great. Listen, you know, I, I've been sick, I, I've been injured, I've been hurt, I've been out of work, I've been flat broke. You probably have too, sure. and uh, we all have. Everybody on that stage, you know, had to had to work hard to get there. Uh, all of our journeys have been trying and challenging, and I wouldn't I wouldn't change a minute. What do you think of uh, the young singers? Well, I think they're obviously amazingly uh, talented and gifted, and they've got a really tough gig ahead of them. Not not very different than than me or Debbie or Brent or any of us. There's a lot of people that want a very few jobs. Uh, 
Uh, so you've got to you got to work really hard at it. And at the end of the day, it's going to come down to who gets in the practice room and sings better than anybody else, and who gets the lucky breaks. <laughs> you keep coming back to working hard, and <laughs> we want to thank you for share opening opening up yourself to us and sharing with us. It's I, we know you came out of your cocoon and your focus. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been very inspirational for us. Thank, thank you, you, Dennis. Thank Bing, you. My pleasure. This I, has been. Classic Talk with Bing and Dennis. Today our guest has been Jay Hunter Morris. Thank you.